Hi guys, um, I'm Michael and this is this tutorial is uh, going to be looking at the basically just a basic introduction to A1 um, just a basic breakdown um, I'm going to be talking about some things you also find common in Logic, Cubase or other doors and uh, yeah, let's jump in shall we so um, basically, when you open A button, you'll get this page here. This is known as like the live mode, but we won't go into that. But um, I just think it's aware, uh, good to be aware that we have two, two pages. So um, you want to make sure you're on this one. Um, right here is our tempo. So our tempo controls how fast or how slow the track is. So we also have our metronome here. So metronome is something that just keeps counting the beat like this. This is where our loop is. So if we hit this, um, it will go back and that's going to be useful for when you're creating ideas. Um, so with the tempo, for example, if you raise it, the track, the whole track will be faster. And obviously, if you uh, take it down, uh, it will go slower. Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously, this is your record button, um, and this is your play and stop. Um, this is, I believe, it is. Let me just double check. Oh, that's your automation arm. So, when that's on, um, it will record any automation that you're doing, but that's something we'll talk about. Um, so we're going to have a look at audio track, and now audio tracks could be used to put audio files on, such as WAVs, MP3s, um, or any other kind of audio file on. So, for example, you know some of my samples are. Well, most of my samples are web format. Um, you know, let's just go to tab loops or something. Else. Should I have a, a loop somewhere? Let's just go drums percussion. So let's just drag that in here. And here's a good example. Here's a good example of audio. Um, so, oh, so this is, sorry, let me just go through the channels as well. So on this page, this is the volume. This is your pan. So this is like right, left. And these are your sends, uh, which we'll talk about in another tutorial. Um, but you know it's also the same here so if I take this down to 8.9 dB around here it will be 8.9 dB so why it's not showing the figure I have no clue. oh it shows the figure sorry at the bottom here so yeah it's right at the bottom um, so yeah, here's an example of audio. Uh, Ableton allows you to control your audio in great depth. Uh, we have this thing called Warp, which we'll speak about probably in another to another tutorial. Um, we'll speak about Warp in depth. But we also have these algorithms that come along with uh, Warp. Let me explain what it basically is. So, what basically allows you to kind of shift uh, audio to kind of where you want it to be. Um, it also allows you to kind of, uh, you know, pitch things about and use different algorithms to preserve the audio. Um, from my knowledge is that beats 
uh, is used for rhythmic or transient uh, kind of audio or sound uh, tones. I think that's kind of used for uh, you know pitch, but um, it has this thing called grain size. So I'm guessing it's used in some sort of granular kind of uh, algorithm to it. So. Uh, I think that kind of some sort of granular algorithm that messes with the pitch but I think granular synthesis and talking about granular processing is definitely another conversation for another day I know texture is exactly the same thing um, not exactly the same thing but it's a very it's like a similar thing you see we've got grain size here and um, what that basically is if I can give an example of that is uh, if I was to stretch this maybe and pitch this up a bit so as you can see it's kind of controlling the stutters and how far apart those are uh, if I put it on tone so I think tone does exactly not ex well, it's exactly the same thing but it probably is meant to be kind of just used for pitches um, complex oh and what I just did here guys that just stretches it by two and then so forth and so forth um, complex is kind of used for just general audio I guess uh, you know things like whole tracks or vocals you know and then complex pro I believe is used for specifically kind of like vocals or other things it basically prever preserves the formats if it tracks and I don't know if we could do that if it will be a good example with the drum loop if not uh, let's see if they've got something else maybe like um, yeah let's see if we could get like another like another loop or something. Uh, we don't need another loop, we just need a piece of audio really. Um, but so if we look at this, this piece of audio here, and remember one thing about audio visually, it will always show you the wave, it will always look like this. When you're working with audio, you're always going to get this kind of thing up here where it's a sample and whatnot so just take that in mind um, so we're going to pitch it on complex let's say you pitch up by 6 I'm not sure if you guys can hear that subtle difference and this is probably not the best example um, let me see if I could find something Este es el ritmo de Latinoamérica. Okay, I think a vocal is a better example. So, um, for example, you know, if we have it on complex and let's say you pitch it up by like <laughs> eight. Este es el ritmo de Latinoamérica. See, as you can hear, the audio starts to introduce weird artifacts because it's pitched. Now what the formants kind of do is kind of preserve the audio. So let's take off the formants. So that's what kind of it does. It just kind of preserves the formants, the natural harmonics um, in the voice. So that's the basic breakdown of audio for you uh, in Ableton. We still need to go through walking but I think I'll definitely do that in a different tutorial um, so yeah let's look at uh, let's even keep that there let me look at MIDI so also sorry I want to talk about uh, inputs and outputs and stuff in Ableton uh, right now I haven't really got interface connected um, I'm just going to use my built in microphone but if you have an audio interface connected usually it will show all your channel strips here 
Um, so let's say if I had eight, it will show eight. Uh, if you go, if you do have your audio interface connected and it doesn't show eight inputs or how many inputs is in your sound card, if you just go input configuration, you should be able to select how much inputs you want. Um, so yeah, that's how you select your inputs. So for example, if my microphone was recorded on um, connected to input one, um, I then hit input one, hit record, and then literally right now I'm using my laptop microphone and um, one way to do is duplicate this channel if I don't want to record over this audio um, so literally just by selecting input 1 or 2 um, and if I was to start speaking as you can see it will record me and you could do this for uh, you know really anything um, but yeah that's how you kind of record audio on, on Ableton um, so depending on what your what what's connected to your your inputs on your sound card or whatever whether it's a guitar or uh, a synthesizer that's how you'd record it and um, you just select the input and yeah I'm not about to play it back don't want to hear my voice. <laughs> um, yeah, that's how you record audio. Uh, you could also record MIDI on on in here as well. And um, we haven't really spoken about MIDI yet, so let's dive in. Uh, so MIDI basically is just information, you know. Um, first, I just want to show you guys what it looks like and how to record it. So. Right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna select uh, let's look at analog. This is just a synthesizer. So simple synthesizer. Um, So I'm just gonna go ahead and play something. Um, so if I hit rec if I select record here or record arm, then what that means is basically it's gonna record this channel. So you can't just hit record here; it has to know what channel is recording. So you wanna hit that red thing, and let's just say I recorded some MIDI. Okay, so recorded some maybe some rough uh, chords. Now, what MIDI is? Um, it's basically information, you know, that's shown on a piano roll, saying this is how long this note is. This is what the pitch is. You know, it's this hard. So right now I'm playing it on full velocity. To check out the velocity, you literally hold command over it, and if you drag up and down, you can choose how hard the note is or how soft it is. Um, and then, depending on how light or dark it is, it will show you. Um, so, that's what MIDI is it's just information, really. Of course, the piano roll is saying, uh, you know, I'm playing this pitch, I'm playing this chord, I'm playing it for this length. And why MIDI is useful is because, let's say, I don't want this instrument anymore, but I still want the same chords, the same musical information. I could then select something different, like a different instrument. I don't know what this is, but for example, same musical information, different instrument. So that's all MIDI is, literally. It's just information. Um, and that's what it should be seen as. Uh, now, MIDI's good because it's flexible, you know, um, if you want to change the musical information, you can, whereas audio is kind of set in stone. Um, but one thing I like about audio is that because of its limitations, it allows you to experiment, um, you know, it allows you to reverse stuff, 
and stretch stuff and I didn't even show you guys how to reverse so to reverse you just hit this rev thing here and it will do it for you see um, so yeah audio just allows you to get really creative because you're limited but what I do like about MIDI is the flexibility and a lot of the times you are going to be working in MIDI um, in order to create your own you know proper like original <laughs> kind of stuff um, you're going to be working in MIDI so yeah that's the introduction to uh, audio and MIDI